Hey guys, just wanted to give you a rundown on my solar battery box that I use for camping. This thing has been amazing. It's, the convenience that it adds to your camping trip is just phenomenal. The box itself I got from Super Cheap Auto in Australia. Uh, that was about 30 bucks. Uh, when I initially made the box I intended it to be watertight but it's since changed a little and as you can see the, the solar charge controller now is on the external as well but when I go camping this is always left underneath cover anyway so it's really become a non-issue for me it's really now just to contain the batteries and any of the wiring inside and make it easy to carry around when it's made portable Uh, one of the main things that I wanted to have, uh, I have the light affixed on top. It's just mainly for convenience. This doesn't get used a great deal when we're camping itself. It's just so that if you're carrying the box around, you've got some light with it. Uh, with the switch there. Uh, I've got plugs on. This cable here is to connect my solar panel to. Uh, these ones here I use, these are the strip lighting that we use when we go camping uh, for in our tents and, and our covered areas. These things are awesome, they use very little power. And you can leave them on all night if you need to and the draw on your batteries is so negligible that they're just amazing. When I first built the box, uh, this was the charge controller that I had. It was inside the box initially. Uh, there's still nothing wrong with this charger. The only issue that I had is I, this battery here actually died on me while we were camping once and I, I had no way of checking the voltage or anything that was available. Now with this charge controller you can it'll give you a read out of the voltage and when you've got the solar panel connected up it'll let you read out that plus it also has USB ports on it which are massively convenient as well in its initial build I had this hanging out from it came out of this hole here and that gave me my 12 volt cigarette lighter port plus the USB ports and that did everything that I needed to do, but it was a bit of a pain having it hanging out of the box. So if you're carrying it around or in storage or anything, that was always hanging out. That wasn't really the best setup. So now with the USB ports on the actual charge controller, I really don't need USB ports anywhere else. So I've put a 12 volt socket now into the front of the box that's wired up inside. I have uh, one initial problem that I ran into uh, in one of the first builds I had of it as well was I never had a fuse. If you're going to build one I highly recommend you put a, a fuse of some description inside just because I short circuited something one time when we were out camping and the, the first one of these charge controllers that I have it actually blew it up. So we were stuck then camping with just the remaining charge in the batteries and we weren't able to get any charge from the solar panel back into the batteries and, and the batteries run through your charge controller and output from here and so it wasn't even doing that it really just shut everything down so I'd learnt my lesson there pretty quick make sure you put a fuse of some description just this is just an inline one that screws open with the and I've lost it I carry spares with so that I've always got some in case I blow some up and they just go in you can get the other little slimline ones that are more from modern style automotive the little plug-in types as well they might be a little bit more convenient but this was what I got hold of so inside the box uh, everything runs from the charge controller uh, they're pretty basic to set up. There's 
the two lines that run from your solar panel, two lines that run to your batteries and the two lines that run for anything that you want to run power to. Uh, that all runs inside the box. Uh, obviously the battery ones come in. I have two 9 amp hour sealed lead acid batteries inside. Uh, they're just set up there. Then I have the, the power cables uh, and like I explained the, the fuse is on anything that the power is running to. And that just splits up between the two ports that I run my LED strip lights to there. Uh, also the power runs down to the 12 volt cigarette lighter plug that's on the front of the box and it also runs up the back here and underneath to the switch and the setup for the light that's on top of the box. So there's really not a great deal running off it. The two cables for the for the solar panel that come from the charge controller run back inside the box and come out to this point here. Uh, I previously had two little bolts with wing nuts on that I used to connect the solar panel onto but I just found it was rather inconvenient as well and if I was worried that if I'd lost the wing nuts or anything while I was camping that then I wouldn't be able to keep it connected on so I've since put one of these connectors on I'm not really sure what they're called but it works well the cables that come in to from the charge controller to the batteries my two 9 volt uh, sorry, my two 12 volt 9 amp hour batteries are run in series uh, which means your positive is always connected to the positive of the other battery and the negative to the negative. Uh, if you connect the positive to the negative on a battery uh, it'll, it'll add up the voltage of the batteries. Uh, so I, I could potentially end up with 24 volts but I, I want it to run on 12 volts so they just run in a series which just doubles the, the amp hours that way, which is still running at the 12 volt and you just have twice as much battery power obviously. Now if you want to set one of these up for yourself pretty much everything is available on eBay. Uh, you can probably buy these boxes although I'm not 100% sure uh, and most of the prices that I'll be roughly quoting are in Australian dollars uh, as I mentioned earlier, this box came from Super Cheap Auto. I've also seen ones that are almost identical at BCF uh, for around the $30, $40 mark. Uh, as I said, you'd probably get one on eBay. Uh, the batteries, you can buy them obviously at any battery stockist locally if it's better for you, but I found their prices are a bit dear. I've bought some online through eBay uh, that were roughly half the cost which to give you an idea one of these batteries at a local battery shop will be about the $45 mark uh, that's for the 12 volt 9 amp hour and I was able to get some on eBay for approximately $20, $25 you know so there's quite a massive saving there um, the strip lighting of various lengths these I think are 5 metre rolls, these ones that we roll out while we're camping uh, the small piece on here, you can buy all of that on eBay uh, so you, the strip lighting, these 5 metre lengths generally cost somewhere around about $10 mark on eBay for one of those, so they're next to nothing as well the batteries, as I said, you know, you're looking, depending on where you buy them uh, $20 to $50 perhaps uh, you don't necessarily need to as well, I just find that it just gave us a bit better, a, I, I just felt a bit safer having that, you know, because we charge a lot of stuff while we're out and I just, if you have some overcast days or something, it just gives you that little bit extra power there that you're not having to worry about things, whether your battery has charged or not. If all you're doing is some strip lighting and maybe charging your phone or something like that from your unit, one battery is ample. Uh, it's really probably not necessary to have any more and I could probably get by with one but as I said it's just more of a backup than anything um, 
probably one of the dearer parts of the entire setup is your solar panel. This one that I use is a 20 amp panel. Uh, I could probably do with one that's slightly bigger and at first I was a little bit concerned that this probably didn't have enough power but it's, on a sunny day this is ample for the setup that I have. Uh, it'll get it charged up again pretty well with every day without any hassle whatsoever. Uh, the solar panel, one, a 20 amp like this will probably cost around the $40 mark on eBay. Uh, but if you check them out, the prices, if you jump up to say a 50 amp panel, it really doesn't increase the price that much. Uh, over what you would pay for one of these. It will be a little bit dearer obviously, but it's not a great deal. It's So if, if you're thinking about either setting up with bigger batteries or you think you might have a larger draw from your batteries during during the night or, or even during the day, uh, you know, you, you might be better off getting one that has a little bit more input power. Uh, then you're obviously one of the most important things is you're going to need your charge controller. This one and these ones both available on eBay and both of them are about the $10 mark. Uh, they both do exactly the same thing. This one with the, the digital readout and the USB ports I find is a lot more handy. It, it allows you to read what voltage you have in your batteries, what sort of power you've got coming in from your solar panel just to keep an eye on things so that you can monitor it a bit easier. Uh, both of them have setups in them to regulate uh, if your batteries discharge below a certain level it'll cut off uh, because these sealed lead acid type batteries and stuff uh, aren't designed to be drained down to nothing it, that will ruin them. So these controllers have set up in them to cut it off at a certain point. Now with these ones uh, it's just permanently set up. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, and it, and it works fine, there's nothing wrong with it, but with this little one here you can go into the settings and change it, even though I leave it the way, the points where it's set up. Uh, you do have the ability, if for any reason you really need to, that you can get in there and change those settings. Uh, then there's also, the, the same again, they both have it, that there's a charge up point as well, so they have a cut off point and a charge up point where they cut off just so that they're not overcharged or discharging too low because both ends of that will ruin the batteries. So once you've got your, your batteries, your solar panel, your charge controller, some strip lighting, the really only extra thing you might need is a few switches depending on how you want to have it set up, a 12 volt socket if you want the convenience of that, uh, and then just a little bit of wire, some connectors, and if you've never used it before, heat shrink tubing. You can wrap it up with good old insulation tape, but it's fairly unreliable, and this seals it a lot better and holds the wire a lot better after you've soldered it. Your connection. Now, just to give you an idea, um, while we're camping, we have quite a bit of electronics generally that we use. You can obviously you can charge your phone from the unit. Uh, I always have my GoPros while we're camping. It's so handy to be able to charge those while you're out and not have to take a phenomenal amount of batteries with you. Now, I don't use batteries a great deal while I'm camping, but we do have some torches that use them and some older cameras as well. Uh, if you get one of these units, it's just a battery charger that has a USB port on the end. They're available on eBay. I'm not really... It's, I've had this one for a long time now, but I can't imagine they'd be more than, say, $15 for something like that. And it just helps as well. 
that while you're out that if you need to charge batteries it'll do this one will do double A's and triple A's which just helps out as well uh, and then obviously running your strip lighting you know they're all charging everything's running and we can have setups like this going on every night for f the, the lights particularly can stay on for up to five hours some nights uh, I have left them on longer uh, we'll have phones charging quite regularly we have the GoPros charging at least once a day uh, we have also the young girl has tablets and DVD players that require recharging as well. It keeps her entertained while we're camping. Uh, they get recharged. Uh, so it's never ending the amount of stuff that we can put into this box uh, to keep it running and just to make life more comfortable for us and allow us to use the electronic equipment that keeps things documented, keeps us in touch with people and keeps everything running. Plus the strip lighting I've found, you know, it doesn't seem to break. Uh, I have seen some where individual cells of these will die, but I've never had any problems with mine. Uh, you can... So they seem quite robust. Uh, and they're... I mean, when you look at the size of that rolled up, that's nothing to pack. It's a lot easier than packing the old style gas lanterns, which we used to use quite a lot that go on top of your LPG gas bottles. Uh, you know, or other types of rechargeable or solar powered lanterns and things that are available. Uh, so I'll take it out and I'll just plug the solar panel in. You can see it running. You can see then you, you'll get an idea on here of, see it's telling you the load is running currently. Uh, You'll see once the solar panel goes on that it'll light up another area here that indicates that there is charge coming in and then what the voltage is that's coming in from it. So I'll just take that out and plug it in. It's a bit of an overcast day but you'll still get some idea of what it does. So I've got the solar panel laying out. If you have a look, there's no direct sunlight whatsoever today. Very overcast. that it's getting some charge now. It's already jumping it up. Even with the little amount of sun that there is. 